Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of Iron Man's Unibeam build. Last time I showed you my extremely bright cluster of 10 watt LEDs which run at 9 to 10 volts and draw nearly an amp each. They're mounted on an old CPU heatsink. Um, although I didn't think I needed it last time because basically I was running them on um, a set of eight rechargeable AA batteries. And I could only... Um, basically draw two amps from that pack because the voltage dropped so much on load which would be sort of five to six amps with those um, that it couldn't supply the voltage anymore so the, the voltage dropped and therefore it couldn't drive the current so I've now been experimenting with some different batteries I've got a pair of um, 7.2 volt batteries here which are you know race, um, RC racing packs wired in series to give me 14 volts um, they're still fairly unhappy providing that load and the voltage does drop but it doesn't drop enough that I can't provide what I need so I've now um, done some additional bits and pieces I've got a microcontroller here which is a pickaxe 08 m2 and it has an op amp on the board and basically I'm using the DAC output so um, pickaxe uh, basic commands page 52 has a nice circuit and some code for using the DAC um, somewhere here on the next page in fact which is very simple there's the code which basically means one of the pins on this chip is a digital to analog converter so you can program the voltage that comes out of that so it can't provide very much current which is what the op amp is for on there there's more details in the manual um, so that basically means that it can provide more current to the DC input of the PWM to drive it, although there shouldn't be too much current drain, but without it doesn't work. So I've now got a switch which I, when I switch the switch, it ramps up the LED cluster and then ramps it down again. Um, so I've got a couple of multimeters set up here. This one is measuring the voltage across the across the cluster and the other one is measuring the current so if I switch the switch and cover my eyes we can see the meter on the left gets up to just under 5 amps and that's at 8 volts and that's incredibly bright so it fades up at, um, over 3 seconds there's a very simple loop written a for loop in the microcontroller to fade up the DAC output and then it fades down again, well it stays there for 3 seconds and it fades down over 3 seconds so basically if you're looking at it you get um, you think that's bright and then you, you know you get an opportunity to look away before it hits full power um, I can't really look directly at that and then it powers down again so obviously this could be programmed to do anything, it could be programmed for sharp pulses to turn on to a lower value and stay there or it could be it could power up to 20% and then it could pulse like the arc reactor does in the or the unibeam I should say does in the movie um, and then it could you know strobe or do anything else although we need to be quite careful that we don't um, surprise people with its brightness because we don't want to burn anyone's eyes out or um, with strobes you have to be careful because some people are sensitive to strobe and it can cause fits and so on so that's why at the moment I prefer to power it up slowly so you get opportunity to look away um, the pulsing you can see is just the camera rate interacting with the PWM frequency, the frame rate of the camera. So one other curious thing, um, the, rate, the reason I know the batteries are unhappy, um, if I connect them straight to the power input of the PWM then I can hear the PWM frequency buzzing inside the batteries, um, which I think is just because the current drain is very high. Um, so I've got this big pack of resistors which um, is these are 4.7 ohms, there's 8 of them in parallel which gives me about half an ohm and each one is a 10 watt wire wound resistor um, so that stops the problem from happening I think partially because it limits current to a degree and also they're wire wound so they're inductive so it's probably making um, a filter that filters out the noise on the power lines so um, I'm probably going to swap the batteries for LiPos in the future which can do much higher drain um, but for probably I'll keep this back, this uh, resistor pack to help protect the batteries and I'll probably make a feature of it so I've got lots of these and, I'm, and basically the next stage is mounting this so I'm going to be laying the resistors out each side and in the actual suit when I've built it you'll be able to remove the chest plate and look inside and see all of the um, apparent electronics a bit like it was in the movie so it's quite good to have all these things as features and also need to do something about mounting this PWM board because it's got um, things that stick up on it which I need to flatten so that's the purpose of this video, 
So we better get 3D printing a mounting plate. Okay, so here's the 3D printed assembly. I've actually attached all of the things. So the heatsink fits quite neatly in there. I've got the resistors either side with lots of wires attached. And um, these are just held on with cable ties which go into holes that I made in the back. And the heatsink is just wired on with three bits of wire through holes as well. So um, here's a diffuser that I made last time, which fits quite nicely on there. Um, in fact, this is going to be mounted in the front of the suit, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I haven't done much with this yet. I haven't bothered to flatten the heatsink down. It's just going to be a case of undoing those screws and uh, bending that 90 degrees. So um, I'm not sure where that's going to fit in the suit yet. And the microcontroller also may well not be this one. It may be a centralised one in the suit. And I'll be making a future video on how I'm planning to do the electronics and the central control system for the whole suit. So let's just go and... Uh, have a look at the chest plate. I'm just going to glue this in and we'll see how it fits. So I've glued the diffuser into the chest plate. Here's the rest of the uni beam, and that's eventually going to mount onto the strapping system underneath, um, roughly here. Um, and that's going to be permanently fixed on. I'm also going to build several other features in here um, in the same fashion, 3D printed parts and some items from the dollar store, that's the pound shop in the UK, um, and sort of LEDs and nice features. Um, which are going to make up the rest of the inside of the chest plate. So when you remove it, um, it's fairly similar to what you see in the movie. So that's the next thing that I'm going to be doing. Um, and at that point I'll sort out the electronics. The other board you see here is from the helmet, which I still need to finish. That's hopefully going to be self-contained in the helmet. Um, there's going to be a central control system, as I say, which may well control this unibeam and a number of other features. The other thing that's happening is I'll be sorting out the uh, strapping system. So we've currently got this metal system with magnetic plugs and sockets uh, which plug together. So I'm going to be replacing all of that for the entire torso um, basically to position the chest plate correctly because it's a bit low at the moment and it's lower on one side for some reason and to make the uh, basically the strapping system be fitted into the armour. So. Um, the back of the suit will have some sort of semi-rigid thing with foam pads old over the shoulders as it has. And then there'll be um, a 3D printed latching mechanism that holds the front on with all the details. And then another set of latches that holds the chest plate on. So that should be uh, hopefully a bit lighter, better fitting and um, on the whole easier to put on. So check out xrobots.co.uk for more updates. There's pictures and words and links to products I've used. Also check out my Facebook page, my Google+, Pinterest, Twitter, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for updates.